The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship once again this weekend. So great to have you with us. This online service will continue to be part of our worshiping life uh, for the foreseeable future. So will the outdoor and indoor services that we've been having uh, here on site on the church premises as well. However, starting next Sunday, November the 8th, the worship times for the outdoor and indoor services will be changing because most of our in-person worshipers have been worshiping outside at the nine o'clock service. We want to continue to provide that service for as long as we can. And to, so to accommodate the cooler weather that is settling in, the outdoor service will now be moving to 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings and the nine o'clock service will now take place here inside the sanctuary. The session has decided to do this through at least uh, November and we will consider December and beyond here at the end of this month. So again, nine o'clock for the indoor service starting next Sunday, the 8th, and 11 o'clock for the outdoor service as well, starting on next Sunday, November the 8th. The order of worship for this online service is available to you on our website at fpctn.org. There you will find information on ministry opportunities in the week ahead. We thank and welcome back Linda Stutzenberger as our special guest musician uh, today. Uh, Linda is uh, a wonderful musician on organ and piano, and of course, she blesses us regularly with her gifts on the harp which she is doing today as well. We welcome her back. Also today during worship, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper together. We invite you to have something to eat and drink beside you so that you can participate later on in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup as part of our church family. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of Almighty God. Let us join together in the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us worship God. The opening hymn today from our hymnal is number 145, Rejoice, Ye Pure in Heart. <laughs> By your spirit, O God, still our restless spirits and unstop our ears. Let us hear your word that it may be at work in us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. <laughs> I call 
called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Fear the Lord, you saints of the suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Take gospel lesson today is from Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 12. This is Jesus' recitation of what are known as the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in hearts, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, it just so happens that I preached on this text from Matthew back in early February, Jesus' recitation of the Beatitudes. It appeared in early February in the Revised Common Lectionary as the gospel text for that day. Well, you probably don't remember the sermon based on that text that day, which is okay because I went back and, went back and looked at it and it wasn't all that good, frankly. This text from Matthew 5 appears again today, already due to the fact that this Sunday is All Saints Sunday, the day when we remember the saints of the church who have died in the past year. But these verses are also relevant to other things going on in the world on or around November 1st, 2020. I don't know if you've heard this, but Election Day is this coming Tuesday, I don't know how you couldn't know that. Evidently, there's a presidential election this year, and evidently, it's a rather contentious one. And then there's this ongoing coronavirus pandemic. You may have heard of this, too. We're eight months into it. We're much better off than we were eight months ago in many ways, and yet there are still great challenges that remain with it. And then I saw that there was more unrest in our country this past week, Philadelphia specifically, 
with looting and rioting there in response to an officer-involved shooting. So with all that's going on, the Beatitudes come to us once again, and they are fitting for us on this first Sunday in November 2020. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. One way to define the term poor in spirit is those who have enough humility that they don't operate from a sense of pride. They are those who recognize they are both the beneficiary of the help of others and part of a system in which they pay it forward and help those whom they can. I have in my mind these days so many good and faithful servants of Christ, like yourselves, who have spent your lives, and most recently these last several months, giving what you have to others who are in need. You've looked in on your neighbors, you've continued to give generously to food pantries and other charities and to the church. You've been relentless in maintaining your faith and your hope. You, in this case, are the poor in spirit, and blessed are you. Jesus also said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. On this All Saints Sunday, we surely do remember those saints in our church and beyond who have died in this past year. And as we give thanks for their positive influence on our church, we also remember the acute pain of those who were closest to them and so very much miss them yet today. Say a prayer for the families of those in our church family who have died in the last year, that they indeed, even though these perhaps many months out, may be comforted still in their loss. Jesus also said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meek people are those, in parts with great authority, who don't lord it over others. Meek people promote servant leadership. Let's be in prayer that all those who win election this coming Tuesday may be meek in their authority over their constituents. Jenny and I voted on Tuesday of this past week at the Knoxville Expo Center. It was a great experience. We only were there for 30 minutes from the time we walked in to the time we left. We saw young people there voting who had their children with them. We saw older people who could hardly walk came in to the polling place to vote. Everybody was in good spirits. Everybody was respectful. And as we were leaving, Jenny heard one of the older gentlemen who was leaving with us, as he was inserting his computerized ballot into the scanner, say, this is the greatest act we can do as citizens. All of us who vote would agree. And yet we know many of our citizens feel burned by politicians. An article in the New York Times this past week told the story of many citizens, many of whom who are poor and uneducated, who have decided to sit out the election again this year. They won't be voting because they don't feel any politicians really truly address their concerns. They don't see them as servants. May our leaders, going forward after November 3rd, be those who are meek, who are servant leaders. Jesus also said, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. How many people can we point to throughout this pandemic we've been living through who have been on the front lines caring for COVID patients in our hospitals? There are thousands. From our church, Abby Begovich is one of them. So is Lynn Dawes' daughter, Robin, and her husband, Mark. These are people who are doing their jobs and at the same time being merciful to those they serve while putting themselves 
at risk at the same time. Blessed are the merciful, Jesus said, for they will receive mercy. Before game one of this year's World Series, Major League Baseball honored some of these frontline heroes. They included married couple Jamie Edens and Ryan Ward. Jamie threw the ceremonial first pitch to Ryan at game one the other night. In April, Jamie and Ryan, both nurses from Tulsa, Oklahoma, resigned from their jobs, packed up their belongings, and drove across the country to help on the front lines of the pandemic in New York City. And upon completing their commitment in New York at the end of July, they drove to Texas, where they continue to display the same selfless commitment in their work there. There are thousands like them on the front lines who are showing this kind of mercy. Blessed are they. And in what seems as important as any of the Beatitudes in this run-up to Election Day this coming week, there is this one. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. In our public discourse, on the streets of our cities, in the run-up to the elections, let's all be peacemakers. And let's pray that all citizens, with deeply rooted opinions, beliefs, and allegiances, will assume the role of peacemaker, not agitator, within their families, their friendships, their workplaces, their churches, and their communities in these upcoming days. Peacemaking is found when people, despite differences of opinion, work together for the common good. And we're starving for more of that in our country today. Sometimes this is hard to believe, but human beings have a desire to cooperate. Despite what we see sometimes in the halls of power around the world, people have an inborn desire to jointly work towards the same end. Duke University professor Michael Tomasello is an expert in this field. And he says that his research is revealing that we want to cooperate because it's mutually beneficial to do so. One of Tomasello's experiments involved two, young children ages two or three in a room without any adults. The kids were faced with this task of pulling together to bring a board, basically a seesaw, toward them. And on the end of each board were two small toys that could be accessed once the board had been pulled close enough to them. As the children pulled, the toys rolled toward them. One of the children ended up with three toys while the other one ended up with two. The lucky child who had gained three toys made one of his toys available to the other child, the unlucky partner who had only obtained one toy so that they ended up together with an equal amount. A parallel experiment was conducted with chimpanzees. The lucky chimp never tipped the reward to the unlucky partner. The chimp took the reward for itself. For humans, it was all about restoring cooperation and hence equity. For chimps, it was all about grabbing what was available to be grabbed. The most basic comparative fact, writes Tomasello in a recent paper, is that in situations of free choice with rewards for both partners identical, three-year-old children mostly collaborate with a partner, whereas chimpanzees mostly go it out alone. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but we humans want to collaborate to get the best for everybody. We do inherently want to be peacemakers. Once upon a time, a, during a Little League baseball game, a coach said to one of his young players, do you understand what cooperation is? What a team is? And the little boy nodded in agreement. 
Do you understand what matters is whether we win together as a team? The coach asked. And again, the little boy nodded in agreement. So the coach continued, when a strike is called or you're out at first, you don't argue or curse or attack the umpire. Do you understand all that? And again, the young boy nodded in agreement. Good, the coach said. Now go over there and explain that to your mother. We need some good old-fashioned cooperation. What Jesus called peacemaking. To get us going where we want to go. We all have unique talents and skills that can lend, it, lend themselves to good peacemaking. I think of Chuck Stevie, one of the saints that we salute today who died this past year. In addition to being an engineer, Chuck was a lifelong musician. He sang in church choirs from the time he was a teenager, but he also learned how to play the piano. And in my time here, every once in a while, in his later years, Chuck would come up to the church during the week and uh, he'd just start playing the piano in Room A, our old sanctuary. And it wouldn't matter for the rest of us what was on our minds, the pressing issues of the day or the challenges of work, they seemed to evaporate for even just a few minutes when you could appreciate Chuck playing the piano. And he always did it by memory. Great musicians are peacemakers. Good cooks are peacemakers. So are people who can make you laugh. So are great listeners. So are great actors who in a performance can make you cry. We can all be peacemakers. We need to all be peacemakers. With so much division all around us, with the continuing pandemic still at hand, with unrest in our streets, we have, all of us, what it takes to make peace, to cooperate. Blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus said, for they will be called children of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In our congregation, one week from today, we will celebrate Consecration Sunday. On that day, or around that day, for some of us, we all will be invited to make a special financial commitment to the life of our ministry for 2021. We do this, of course, in response to the blessings of God and the blessing of our church's ministry and the blessings it brings to many other people. I'd like to introduce Jack Reitmeyer, an elder on session and a member of our stewardship team this year, with a short word on the impact that our giving has on our neighbors. Three years ago, Nancy and I moved from Austin, Texas to Knoxville so we could see our two-year-old grandson as he grows up. We left a church that we had attended and served in for over 25 years. It was tough because they truly were a part of our family. As we looked for a new church, we looked for one that reflected the values of our previous church, which was to invite all to worship God, grow in faith, and to follow Jesus by serving others. Since we began to attend FPC during stewardship season, we learned that this is a tithing church. We also learned about some of the ministries which the church supports that directly help to feed those in need. The Volunteer Ministry Center, Second Harvest, Mobile Meals, CARM, and the Shepherd of Hope Food Pantry. Let me read you the words of Beth Mitchell, who has volunteered at the Shepherd of Hope Pantry for the last four years. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit our country last March and stay-at-home orders were put into effect, Many things in our lives came to a screeching halt. Work, school, church services, shopping, and social events, to name a few. But the pandemic did not stop the need in our community to help those less fortunate. One of the community outreach programs that FPC supports is the Shepherd of Hope Food Pantry, a partnership between Faith Lutheran FPC, and Concord Baptist Church. The pantry was quick to alter the logistics of shopping to address the safety of both the pantry workers and clients and to ensure that those that rely on the pantry would continue to be served. Since March, the pantry has seen a sharp increase in the number of clients and many first-time visitors. In part, your ties help to fund the food pantry and other important outreach programs that FPC supports. Many in our community have suffered the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic this year, and our outreach is needed more than ever. I would just like to add, that not only do some of our outreach clients go to the Shepherd of Hope, Shepherd of Hope Food Pantry, but Beth and other FPC members provide their time and talents at the pantry. I think this is clearly following Jesus by serving others. This is only one of the many ways our outreach serves others. As Beth pointed out, your tithes and offerings make this support possible. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you, Jack. You all should have received a mailing from the church in the last week with instructions as to how you can make your commitment uh, for next year. You may bring your commitment card with you if you're coming to church on Sunday, November 8th, or you can mail it, or you can also give uh, or make your commitment electronically as well. And there are instructions for how to do that uh, in that mailing. And thanks to all of you for your continued giving to the church uh, this year yet. For the blessings that you have been and that our church is then able to be to our community. You can give online, by mail, or in person as well. 
Hear the words of Psalm 149. Praise God. Sing a new song, all of you who love God. Let us be glad in our creator. Let all God's children rejoice. God will turn the world upside down and bring honor to the saints who are faithful and true. In the life of the church, All Saints Day celebrates all people of faith, recalling how in the New Testament, the word saints refers to Christians collectively, not just those of special note who have been canonized. It's the recognition of the common bond of Christians, both living and dead, and the common bond of the church here on earth and the church triumphant in heaven. So today we remember those who have gone before us. And specifically, we remember the members of our church family who since this time last year have left us to be united with Almighty God forever. They include Pam Bradshaw, Bob Greenlaw, Marge Griffith, Rex Engel, Evelyn Jackson, Ronald Mann, Judy Rogers, and Charles Stevie. And of course, we remember others too, former members of our church, family members, special friends that each of us had, friends outside of the church who have left us and yet have left lasting imprints on our lives. These saints have received the gift of wisdom, recognize the power of God in their lives, and now celebrate their inheritance as God's children. Let us pray together. O oh God, our source of meaning in life and our hope of victory in death, we bow in gratitude for the ties with which you bind us to those who have gone before us. We are especially grateful for the assurance that the end of their journey with us does not spell the end of their journey with you that their service to you is not limited to the time of their earthly pilgrimage, that their influence on us is not buried with them, that in ways they never would have guessed and we never could have planned, they continue to guide us, helping us resist the temptation to do evil and quickening our will to do good. Just as we are strangely and wonderfully made in your image, we are strangely and wonderfully linked to them across the generations. And for this, dear Lord, we give you thanks. Amen. In the company of saints, we gather today at this table. We seek strength for a broken world. We seek strength that comes in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, broken and shed for us and for a weary world. Come to this table today and find strength for your weakness. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, worthy is your name today. All the saints sing your praise, bow down in worship and pray without ceasing before your throne. In gratitude for their witness and in thanksgiving that you call us children of God, we come to you seeking your will and relishing the chance to be in relationship with you and all the saints. You tell us that the poor in spirit are blessed. While we often seek fleeting riches and worldly status, you remind us that those whose focus is on you those who seek to serve the least of these are the ones who know your blessing. You say that those who are mourning are blessed. In this time of pandemic and economic upheaval, natural disasters and human-inflicted violence, there are many of your children in mourning today. Comfort them in their distress. Relieve their suffering. Make your blessing evident and felt. When strife seems unending and violence grips without surrender, grant us the courage indeed to be peacemakers. Those who refuse to give in to the idea that might makes right, but instead stand stalwart in your mercy. Lord, bless our country with peace this week. May we all find the courage to be united in the aftermath of these elections. At this table today, we remember Jesus, gather with friends and with those who would become enemies, preparing a banquet table and offering himself there as a gift for all the world. He broke bread and shared it, blessed a cup and shared it, opened his heart and shared your never-ending love with all people. 
Jesus still invites us to feast at your table, offering a hospitality that includes everyone and excludes no one, sharing with us a cup overflowing with the promise of your love. Bless the bread we break and the cup we pour, that it would give us comfort and strength for the journey ahead. We make these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this remembering me. And then after supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so remembering me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them remembering that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving today. I invite you to pick up your elements, your bread, and your cup. Jesus Christ, the bread of the world, Jesus Christ, his blood shed for us. Take and eat, all of you. Let us pray together. Living God, through Jesus Christ, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. And now by your spirit, send us out to be bread for the world, so that all who receive your grace may never hunger or thirst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This week, may the God of peace sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and your soul and your body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do this. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all this week. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.